Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, we're going to be breaking down all of the day's movie news and kind of giving a little bit of background into what it all means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer breakdowns, director announcements, things like that. So uh, today's episode is going to be a little different. We are actually going to be covering, uh, as all of you know, the Academy Awards were, were on last night, um, and so I'm going to go over a lot of what, are, what most people consider the main categories. Um, I know that a lot of people out there don't like calling them the main categories, but uh, these are the ones that most people would have an, an association with in terms of knowing who the winners are, or at least have, having previously seen their work. So, um, we, uh, uh, we know that uh, they announced 12 Years a Slave as the Best Picture winner. Now, I don't know anyone out there uh, who has seen it, I haven't talked to a lot of people who have seen it yet, but when I watched the movie, um, I did think it was a very, very well-made film. Um, everything about the movie really was well done. The characters were really, really well written, and they were amazing performances by all actors involved. Um, the the locations, everything about it felt real. Um, my only problem with it, though, is that it's, and again, this is my opinion, but I feel that based on what the Best Picture Academy Award is for. It is for overall the absolute best film of that year. My personal opinion would have been Gravity and, and it's not just because it was a more mainstream film. Gravity was an experience. Gravity was the type of movie that you go to the theater to see. Um, you, you have uh, the complete immersion in the special effects, in the sound department, everything about that movie. Uh, one of the reasons why Gravity actually won seven Academy Awards. It won all of the technical aspects. It won Best Sound Editing, Sound Mixing, Cinematography, Special Effects, Best Editing. And the reason was because, overall, it, w it was the, the, the most well-constructed movie out of all of them, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, and when looking at something like 12 Years a Slave, which, again, phenomenal movie. It was amazing. But my only problem with it is, is that it doesn't have a lot of rewatchability. It's a very tough film to sit through. Um, anyone who has seen it will know what I'm talking about. It, it, it was a very, very good film. Uh, definitely deserving the nomination, but I think in, in all, what the Best Picture Award is about, which is about the, the best overall uh, film of the year, I do feel that Gravity took that. Um, and uh, and you, you, you won't necessarily hear any complaints. Um, I'm not complaining about 12 Years of Life. Again, it was a very good film. I do feel, though, that especially considering that Gravity won seven Academy Awards and 12 Years of Slave only won for Best... Uh, it, it won Best Supporting Actress, it won Best uh, Adapted Screenplay, and it won Best Picture. It didn't win anything else. Uh, not to say that a Best Picture needs to win all those, it's just they usually come hand in hand, but overall I did feel that Gravity was a more superior film in the sense that rewatchability, uh, more people have taken to it, um, wasn't necessarily the greatest story, but the execution is what was important, and that's why uh, Alfonso Cuaron won for Best Director, um, why it won, again, for Best Original Score, Best Sound Effects, Best Visual Effects, Best Sound Mixing, um, uh, and the list goes on. So, um, I do feel that that, that one could have been a toss-up. I'm very happy that 12 Years of Slave won. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy that it did. Because um, the, the only one that I did not I did not want to win was American Hustle. And the only reason is because I do feel that that movie is a little bit overrated. Um, again, 12, uh, American Hustle is a good film. I don't feel that it is Oscar caliber. The performances are very good in it, but overall, I, it, it's it's... David O. Russell is coming off of Silver Linings Playbook from and The Fighter from last year and a few years ago. You have Jennifer Lawrence coming off of her Academy Award winning role from Silver Linings Playbook. Bradley Cooper with his Academy Award nominated role in Silver Linings Playbook. Um, you obviously have Christian Bale and Amy Adams who together were in The Fighter. So, I mean, it, it's this, this mashup of... Uh, of his two best films that he's done, or at least in recent years, the best films that he's done. Um, and a lot of people, I think, were just more taking to that than they were the overall quality of the film. So I'm glad that that didn't win. Um, but uh, I, I would have rather seen Gravity win. Um, like I stated earlier as well, Alfonso Cuaron won for Best Director. This is now two years in a row that uh, the Best Director Academy Award has not gone to the same person who directed the film that won Best Picture. Uh, last year, um, as most people should know, um, um, 
Argo, Ben Affleck's movie that he uh, that he directed, won Best Picture, but Ben Affleck was not even nominated for the Academy Award, which I felt was was just outrageous. He he won every single award in regards to directing that year, with the exception of the Academy Awards. Even the 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 DGA Award, the Directors Guild of America. Um, to put it in perspective, that is every single director in Hollywood who is a part of the DGA votes. And the majority of people felt, even, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that people who were even nominated uh, voted for Ben Affleck, and he won the Best Director Award at, at the Directors Guild Association, or Directors Guild of America. And he wasn't even nominated. So, I mean, this is now two years in a row. Uh, I do feel that there was no contention, though. Alfonso Cuaron was the, he was the, the, the leader of that movie. He, he spearheaded every aspect of that. It was his vision. He, he co-wrote it with his son. Um, and... and Overall, I felt it was just, that was the picture that should have won, in, in my opinion. Um, but best actor, hands down, Matthew McConaughey. I don't think, it, the Chiwetel Ejiofor for, for, uh, for 12 Years a Slave was the, a close second. I was hoping for Leo, but I'm so happy that McConaughey won. Uh, with his roles in Dallas Buyers Club, in Wolf of Wall Street, the small role that he had at the beginning, and uh, a movie called Mud that he had released earlier in the year. I don't know if a lot of people have seen that movie, but if you haven't seen it, it's called Mud. Check it out. It's a phenomenal performance. Um, there was a lot of people who were wondering which one is he going to get nominated for because it was almost a shoe-in early in 2013 when he came out with Mud that he was going to get the nomination. So just, ju just looking at the fact that Matthew McConaughey used to be known as a joke, uh, he used to be known as the rom-com guy. He was the guy who, in every movie, took a shirt off to showcase how good-looking he was. Um, now people are actually recognizing what a talent the guy actually is. So I'm really happy that he's getting all this recognition. And his next major release I am very excited for is Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Um, we don't we know hardly hardly anything about this movie outside of the fact that it will involve wormholes. Um, and, and space travel, most likely time travel too, knowing Christopher Nolan is going to go all over the place, but it's going to be amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that, hoping to see some, uh, some footage for it soon. Um, another shoe-in for the role, that didn't see anyone else uh, even in contention for this, was Kate Blanchett winning Best Actress for Blue Jasmine. Um, anyone who has seen Blue Jasmine knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, she was just absolutely breathtaking in that role. Um, when, when you look at Certain actors who you can you can tell there's a part of themselves in the role that they've created. That was not the case with Kate Blanchett. She was completely immersed in that role um, throughout the entire movie, and even uh, different aspects of her became part of the character, such as like her clothing or accessories or things like that. All of those led to her amazing, unparalleled performance. The, this year is one of the first years that I can remember. Now I'd, I'd have to look back, but this is one of the first years that I can remember where there was almost a shoe-in in, in every category. There's someone who is, this is not, not just a favorite, but we're about 90% sure this person's already got it. Um, and so this year it was, again, it was a toss-up between 12 Years a Slave and Gravity for Best Picture, but Best Director, Alfonso Cuaron, all the way. Uh, Best Actor, Matthew McConaughey. Best Actress, Kate Blanchett. And even the, the supporting actor roles, the, the screenplay, I mean, that one we kind of saw coming, Gravity getting the technical awards. I was surprised for, um, uh, for Great Gatsby to win, uh, only because if, if you look down on the list, I, I, I saw a tweet earlier today um, that said that um, uh, Great Gatsby, which was a, not a great film in any stretch of the imagination, uh, Gravity won more Academy Awards than Philomena, nominated for Best Picture, Nebraska, nominated for Best Picture and Best Actress. Uh, same with Philomena. Um, American Hustle. Uh, which other movies? There, there, were, there was a list of about eight or nine films on this list, and it won more. I think Her, it won more than Her. Um, it almost tied 12 Years a Slave. It had two Academy Awards. 12 Years a Slave had three. So it did win for Best Art Direction and Best Set Decoration, So or Best Makeup, sorry. No, oh, no, sorry. Uh, my, my apologies. Uh, Dallas Buyers Club won for Best Makeup. It was Best Art Direction and Best Set Decoration. Um, but when looking at the supporting, no one thought that anyone other than Jared Leto was going to win. Maybe Michael Fassbender for 12 Years a Slave, but Jared Leto's role in Dallas Buyers Club, that that is a role of a lifetime. I mean, the guy took over six years off of acting uh, to to work, focus on his music because he he's also the lead singer of a band called 30 Seconds to Mars. And... Um, 
he comes back and does this absolutely transformative role. Anyone who hasn't seen Dallas Buyers Club, watch it. This is one of the first years in a long time that I can remember where every single movie on the Best Picture nominees list uh, was a phenomenal movie. Sometimes you get in there and they're they're critically accepted, but I mean, you watch it and you're like, I don't see the big deal with this. Uh, that was not the case this year. Every single movie that was nominated was definitely worth the nomination. Um, and and looking at Lupita Nyong'o for uh, for Twelve Years a Slave, there was no contention. And even listening to her acceptance speech, where she stated the quote, um, "No matter where you're from, your dreams are valid." That is phenomenal. Like that it, to 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 realize something like that, to realize that no matter where you come from, no matter what your upbringing is, if you work hard enough, put yourself through the ringer as much as you can, you will come out on top and you will have your dreams fulfilled. Um, and, and no no better case in point than her walking up to the stage to accept Best Supporting Actress in, in, a, in a, fo a feature film. So that again was a shoe and I didn't see anyone else even coming close. They were granted well worth the nomination, but in terms of standout, no. Jared Leto and Lupita Nyong'o both winning was no. No one could have come close. So for for the screenplays as well, it was kind of a shoe in for Spike Jones um, for for the movie Her. Um, when when you look at the original screenplay list and you see some of the movies that were on there, Her definitely was the one that stood out, especially considering that one of the characters in the movie was was technically not sentient. Um, Scarlett Johansson played an artificial intelligence in the movie, so they, they didn't have their own body. They didn't have, they weren't their own character, they were a computer. And for the ability to have an emotional resonance between two characters that, that leads to um, this amount of accolades for this film, that is a very difficult thing to accomplish. And for Spike Jones to have been able to do that with, the, with her is, I mean, I watched it. It was a good movie. Definitely wasn't one of the ones who was going to win, but um, the overall screenplay, uh, the, the the artistic direction of the movie was just beautiful. It's just a beautiful film. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. It, it's it's charming. It's it's got a lot of heart for it. I mean, check it out. Check it's definitely worth it. Check it out. And uh, of course, John Ridley, who uh, adapted uh, Solomon Northup's um, autobiography for Twelve Years a Slave. No contention there. Um, even if Gravity was nominated, there were a few uh, categories where I did not want Gravity to win because I felt that it was winning in certain other aspects, and if it was good, it was just kind of the train that was hitting each stop. Um, I, I didn't feel that it, it should have, or that it should have won some of the ones that it was nominated for, and luckily it didn't. There were other films that came in that did win, um, but it wasn't even nominated for Best Screenplay. And if it was, that would have been a farce. Um, if, if anyone who's seen Gravity knows what I'm talking about. The movie itself is the visual and auditory experience. It has nothing to do with the overall plot of the movie, which is minuscule. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that about wraps it up for for the Oscar winners. Um, we have a few other pieces of information, so I'll go. I'll, I'll get through those fairly quickly. Um, today was mainly just going to be about Oscar winners, but a few big pieces of news broke, uh, so I am going to cover them here today. So, without further any uh, any further ado, let's get on with the next one. So, uh, Thomas Kretschmann, who people may recognize from movies such as U five seven one, the upcoming Stalingrad, which I've heard is actually pretty pretty incredible, the Russian film about that the infamous battle. Um, he has signed on uh, a, about a month or two ago to play the villain Baron von Strucker in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, for people who aren't familiar with uh, Von Strucker, Von Strucker was mainly an adversary of Captain America in the comics. And um, I'm assuming, based on the level, that, or, or what he stated here, um, I'm, I'm going to assume that his role is relatively small in Avengers Age of Ultron. I don't believe um, that he's going to be a very large villain, considering we have Ultron, uh, and most likely Vision for part of the movie will be a villain. And there's also been a couple of rumors that Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver may start out as villains, or at least adversaries to the Avengers, uh, and then become part of their team later on. So we don't want to get too many villains to take focus away from certain characters. But um, uh, Thomas Kretschmann, in an interview recently, just said that he has signed a multi-picture deal uh, with Marvel. Now, the way that these things work, <clears throat> a multi-picture deal does not mean that they are guaranteed to appear in these movies. What effectively, what effectively happens is... Let's say, for instance, he signed a three-picture deal. Um, that doesn't mean that he will appear in the next three Marvel movies that, that are affecting 
uh, Captain America or the Avengers or anything of that sort. All it means is that if the studio decides to move ahead and move ahead with that character and they want him, he is now obligated to appear. He, it doesn't work the other way where if they decide that they don't want to make the movie, he doesn't have the ability to say, well, I'm under contract for two more films, so you're making two more. It doesn't work like that. Um, even if they decide to make the movie and even use the same character, they're not obligated to use him. It just means that if they want to use him, he is now obligated to appear. So with him saying that he signed on for multiple films, it doesn't mean, again, he, he may get killed in Avengers 2. He may just be a small role, and they've kept that option open just so that while they're doing the movie, if they say, you know what, we like what he's done with this, we're going to rewrite that scene, he's not going to die, we're going to keep him on for more films. That I can see. Um, either that or he's just going to be a minor role. But uh, I do like the idea of him, of him coming in. And if this is true where he's going to be in multiple films, I'm... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's going to be for Captain America 3, or whatever they're going to call it. Um, because, like I said, Von Strucker is a Captain America villain, primarily. He has dabbled with the other heroes before, but mainly he is known as an adversary of Captain America. So, it be interesting to see how they play his character, how he fits into this universe, uh, and what's, uh, what's actually going to happen in regards to that. So, it'll be interesting to see, and um, with, uh, with action principle photography has, has started, started about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, um, and regular principal photography is supposed to start at some point this month, where the main actors are showing up on set uh, and uh, and going to be going through their sequences. So we're, we're probably going to be getting some more information about that soon. So I'm really looking forward to that. I want to, you know, I, I don't want to spoil myself, but I want to know as much information about Avengers as possible. Hopefully we're going to get a big reveal at Comic-Con this year, which I am very much looking forward to. So um, we'll get on to the next piece of news here. This is actually going to be our final piece of news today. And um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually just at a recent convention um, in Ohio, and he was asked about the status of the upcoming Terminator reboot. Uh, and he did state that, yep, everything's moving full steam ahead. Alan Taylor is, uh, is signed on to direct. Alan Taylor is the director of uh, Thor The Dark World, and he also directed several episodes of Game of Thrones. So the guy knows his way around action, around high-concept properties, so I, I'm really looking forward to his take on this. But uh, the, the thing that has me really intrigued about this was uh, the next rumor that came out. Now, again, I need to state this is rumor. No one has come out and confirmed this. Things like this have come out in the past. Actually, um, Latino Review, the, the website uh, known for, for getting their early scoops, they were actually the ones who, uh, who scooped Gal Gadot uh, being cast as Wonder Woman. They have come out, and they feel that they have some very high-quality plot points for the movie, like very... Uh, not confirmed, but from a very reputable source. And what they state is that the movie is going to to take place kind of during an alternate timeline, very similar to what they've done. It, they've compared it to both the reboot of Star, uh, Star Trek, where it takes place in an alternate timeline, uh, in an alternate universe, while still adhering to the way that most of the storyline has gone. Um, but they said this is going to take more of a Back to the Future Part Two approach. And what they mean by that, and this is what gets me really intrigued, and I hope that the, if this ends up being true, I hope that they can execute this properly. But uh, uh, essentially, the events of the first movie and the second movie will be covered in this one. Them basically going back in time and uh, uh, dealing with the sequence at the police station. Um, we're apparently going to meet her uh, her roommate again. I can't remember exactly her name. We're going to meet the punks that we met at the beginning. Bill Paxton famously uh, playing one of the punks at the beginning of the original Terminator. Um, and kind of seeing alternate versions of those sequences playing out. Uh, because again, this is an alternate timeline. One of the rumors actually has it that uh, Sarah Connor actually is killed. Um, and that's one of the reasons why they have to go back is because they actually have to uh, stop her from getting killed because she actually did get killed, and that means John Connor wasn't uh, wasn't born. But we have Amelia Clark who plays uh, Daenerys on Game of Thrones. She is playing the new Sarah Connor. We have Jason Clark from uh, Zero Dark Thirty and the upcoming Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. He is playing John Connor, and uh, Jai Courtney from uh, Live Free or Die Hard, who played John McClane's son. And um, he was also in Spartacus. He played Spartacus's best friend. He has been cast as the new Kyle Reese. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the different types of approach that they go with, especially if you see, oh, and, and with the second film, there would be different sequences taking place while the T-1000 visits um, John Connor's foster parents um, and, and evidently kills them. 
Um, so it'll be really cool to see the angle that they take if they do take this sort of back to the future part two approach where they will be intermingling with these already established sequences that people will know and are familiar with and then adding on to that that is really intriguing and it's a fresh way of looking at this franchise especially considering that the franchise is based around time travel and other than just sending people back in time they haven't really hit hard with the time travel aspect so if they do this this is really cool this is a great way to really siege into a new trilogy which is what they're planning on this movie will be the beginning of a new trilogy if it all takes off so um, <clears throat> Arnold Schwarzenegger is confirmed to be back, most likely because of how they're doing this new plot. Because um, it doesn't make sense for them to completely reboot a franchise, but keep the the core member of the original franchise and bring him up to the new one. It doesn't make sense to do that unless you're tying it in with the originals. Very similar to what they did with Leonard Nimoy in the Star Trek reboot. So um, it, it's going to take a bit of time for us to get more information. Like I said, the filming doesn't even start till the middle to end of April. Um, and, it's, and one thing that's interesting about the filming locations is they said that it's going to take place primarily in New Orleans. Um, we don't know if that's actually where it's going to be set, but that is where they are filming the majority of the movie. But Arnold Schwarzenegger also said that they're going to be filming some sequences in L.A. and in San Francisco. Um, anyone who's familiar with the franchise itself knows that San Francisco is the headquarters for Skynet, who is the, the machine body that creates all the Terminators. It's the head honcho of, of all the bad guys in that, in that franchise. So if they are going to go back to their headquarters, it'll be interesting to see how they tie that in with Terminator Salvation, because in Terminator Salvation, they went and they actually destroyed it. They blew it right up uh, with a with a nuke. So it'll be interesting to see. But the the movie's going to be gearing up filming pretty soon. They're coming out uh, um, July fourth weekend, twenty fifteen. So again, twenty fifteen is becoming a stacked year for movies. Almost every week or every other week, there's a major franchise movie that is being released. So it's going to be really intriguing to see when we start seeing footage about all these movies, when we start seeing uh, if any of these movies are going to get scared and move away from some of these dates. We've already seen it happen with Batman vs. Superman. I don't know if that was the, the fear aspect of it or anything of that sort. I think they, they just weren't prepared to start filming yet. But um, And then, so that's the last bit of new movie news. But I did want to mention to everybody else, make sure that you check in on tomorrow's episode because just as I was about to start recording this, a news article came out that stated that um, they will be premiering, Paramount will be premiering the full, first full trailer for Transformers Age of uh, Extinction tomorrow. So I will be covering that on tomorrow's episode. I'm really looking forward to that. I love the Super Bowl trailer. It was a little bit, a little bit too little uh, of footage for them to reveal. It was just a mismatch uh, of all these different scenes that had no context to them. So we don't really know exactly what the plot points are going to be of this movie. But hopefully we're going to find out tomorrow. And we're going to see some more of those Dinobots. I cannot wait to see the Dinobots on the screen. I can't wait to see to see um, uh, Optimus Prime riding Galvatron. So it's going to be just... Oh, it's going to be an awesome trailer. I can't wait. So check back tomorrow. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the video. Click the little subscribe button down here at the bottom of the page and also don't forget to uh, to add me onto Twitter my Twitter handle is at Nicholson N-I-K-L-S-U-N uh, make sure that you follow me on Twitter I will be updating as news news info comes out uh, but then I will be covering it on my show the following day so uh, without any further ado this has been Nicholson you guys have been great and you enjoy the rest of your day